Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to begin by thanking the U.S. and Canada, Germany, Kuwait, Netherlands, and Japan for co-hosting this important pledging conference in support of Iraq. And Sweden has a long-term engagement to Iraq with uninterrupted development cooperation with Iraq since 2004, combined with a substantial humanitarian support. And since 2011, we have contributed some 185 million US dollars to Iraq alone in both development and humanitarian aid, including support to the UNDP funding facility for stabilization with four million US dollars. Sweden is also a major donor of non-earmarked core support to UN humanitarian agencies, notably UNHCR, WFP, OCHA, and the Central Emergency Relief Fund, which recently allocated some 15 million US dollars to Iraq to alleviate the humanitarian situation in Fallujah. Now, much more needs to be done to meet the immense humanitarian needs in the region. And with an Iraqi community in Sweden now numbering beyond 200,000 people, we are also affected by the crisis firsthand, having received more than 20,000 asylum seekers from Iraq only in the last year. A long-term perspective on civilian stabilization and reconciliation in Iraq is crucial. In term, long-term stabilization will be dependent on key reforms taking place, including SSR, rule of law, administrative reforms. This must not be forgotten. Last year, Sweden's direct support to Iraq totaled 33 million US dollars. And on behalf of my government, I'm pleased to announce today that Sweden will continue to support Iraq at this level, 33, 33 million US dollars. But we are also looking into the possibilities of a further increase for this year and the coming years. Thank you very much. I thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, and I now give the floor to the Ambassador of the Arab Republic of Egypt to the United States, His Excellency Yasser Reda. Thank you very much, Ambassador Power. Uh, in fact, Egypt's Foreign Minister, uh, Sameh Shokri, was very much willing to participate in this conference. Unfortunately, his plane just landed right now, so he asked me to read his remarks. At the outset, I'd like to express our deep gratitude and appreciation to the United States of America for the initiative to host this important conference. Our thanks also to Germany, Canada, Japan, Netherlands, and Kuwait for co-hosting today's pledging conference with a view to mobilize international support to restore stability in Iraq. This conference comes at a very critical juncture in our battle against terrorism, as the military successes needs to be coupled with intensified international support to preserve the stability of the liberated area and lay the foundation for a comprehensive and sustainable development plan for Iraq, with a specific emphasis on meeting the needs of civilian population in liberated areas. This year witnessed intensified contacts and visits between Egypt and Iraq, with the visit of the President of Iraq to Cairo last March and the visit of uh, Foreign Minister Shukri to Baghdad this month. The focus of the discussions during these visits was to discover ways and means for Egypt to contribute to the support of Iraq. In 2015-2016, Egypt conducted uh, capacity building programs for 581 Iraqi army officers, including Iraqi special operation forces, with a view of up upgrading their military skills to match current challenges. Despite financial and economic challenges that is facing Egypt, we provided in 2015-2016 humanitarian assistance also to IDPs in northern Iraq. And I would like to seize the opportunity of this conference to announce that we intend to further increase 
our engagement in this regard. We are going to conduct more capacity building prog programs for Iraqi cadets in the fields of demining, dismantling IEDs, rehabilitation of different infrastructure facilities. Moreover, we are going to provide medical assistance in the form of medicine and medical equipment. Finally, I'd like to underline that Egypt stands ready to actively engage in all efforts aiming to restore stability in Iraq. In this regard, we urge UNDP to develop a matrix of all technical assistance and capacity building programs needed for Iraq to assist donor countries in providing Iraq with the necessary assistance and in the same time coordinate these programs to avoid any overlap or duplication. Thank you very much. I thank the Ambassador of Egypt uh, very much for his uh, pledge, especially given the economic uh, difficulties um, that we know Egypt faces right now. And I now give the floor to His Excellency George Martin, who is the Deputy Se State Secretary of the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs of Switzerland. Thank you, Madam. Uh, to begin with, I would like to thank all inviting countries, United States, of course, Germany, Canada, Japan, Netherlands, and Kuwait, for convening us to this very important conference for the future of Iraq. After 35 years of both international and non-international armed conflicts, the forced displacement of millions of people, serious violation of international humanitarian law and human rights, the lack of protection for the civilian population and the mutual and alternating persecution of numerous ethnic and religious groups, the Iraqi population is today exhausted and extremely vulnerable. According to UNICEF, 3.6 million children are at great risk of death, injury, sexual violence, abduction, and recruitment. The ongoing fight against the self-proclaimed Islamic State should, however, not shadow the root causes of violent extremism that is thriving in Iraq. A lack of adequate protection and insufficient basic services for the whole Iraqi population, policies and institutions insufficiently inclusive for, the, for addressing the needs of their various communities at a political level. In order to respond to the sharp increase of the humanitarian needs resulting from the recent military operations in Hit, Ramadi, Fallujah, and now southeast of Mosul, Switzerland allocated an additional $1 million, reaching a total pledge of $10 million for 2016 in the framework of the Humanitarian Response Plan. Thanks to this pledge, interventions on protection and access to the potable water in Anbar and Ninewa provinces will be reinforced. This will bring the total amount of the Swiss contribution in humanitarian aid to $34 million since 2014. Switzerland urges all parties to the armed conflict in Iraq to refrain from violation of international humanitarian law, as well as from violations and abuses of international human rights law. All civilians and persons who no longer take part in hostilities, irrespective of their ethnic and religious background and of the authority in control of their location, must be protected and treated with humanity. We invite the government of Iraq to investigate and prosecute all serious violations of international humanitarian law, as well as all violations and abuses of international human rights law committed by all parties to the conflict. We also encourage Iraq to ratify the Rome Statute of the ICC or to accept its jurisdiction ad hoc. Given the dire humanitarian situation and the staggering needs, a robust and effective response by a multitude of qualified humanitarian actors is required. In this view, Switzerland encourages the government of Iraq to facilitate the accreditation of humanitarian organizations in Baghdad 
and their access to the people in need. Finally, Switzerland reaffirms its conviction that inclusive institutions and inclusive political decision mechanisms are mandatory for addressing the needs of the various communities. This will build the past towards better stability and peace in Iraq. I thank you, Madam. I thank you, sir. And I now uh, give the floor to Mr. Gert Meinecke, who has traveled here uh, from Iraq. Uh, he is the representative of the ambassador, the ambassador of the Kingdom of De Denmark to Iraq. So thank you for coming all this way. <clears throat> Thank you very much, and thank you to the host government for this uh, very timely uh, initiative. Denmark is also scaling up its support to Iraq in 2016. In a few months' time, a new Danish three-year regional stabilization program for Syria and Iraq will be launched. Nearly 20 million U.S. dollars allocated in 2016 is to be followed uh, by further funding in 2017 and 18. The old <coughs> program objective will be to promote stability in newly liberated areas. As we have heard also this morning, mine action uh, is essential to stabilization. Danish support to demining activities led by UNMAS will therefore be a substantial part of the Danish program in uh, Iraq. Furthermore, the Danish support to the funding facility for immediate stabilization will be six times the uh, contribution last year. The program in 2016-18 will complement Danish ongoing uh, military support, police training, and humanitarian assistance. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, sir. And I now give the floor to Mr. Jarno Sirjala, uh, Director General, Department for Africa and the Middle East in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Finland. Thank you. Let me also start by thanking our host and co-host for uh, convening this uh, pledging conference. Um, on behalf of the Finnish government, I acknowledge the importance of this uh, meeting firstly for mobilizing significantly more financing to the stabilization of Iraq, and secondly, for rallying sustained political support and coherent response from the international community to this cause. I'm pleased to state that Finland is able to contribute to both. Finland is uh, pledging today 10 million euro, uh, equal to some 11 million US dollars new money for short-term and longer-term stabilization of Iraq. This is a very significant increase from the Finnish government, especially taken into account the heavy austerity measures that also our ODA has been subject to. The Finnish uh, pledge is balanced uh, between short- and long-term financing. Half, uh, so 5 million euro of our support is multi-year for the demining activities which pave uh, way uh, to the stabilization efforts and eventually to reconstruction. We are increasing our contribution to the stabilization funding facility for Iraq by 3 million euro, earmarking part of that to, to the window of expanded stabilization that is multi-year commitment. On the short term, we are contributing another 2 million euro in humanitarian assistance to be mobilized very soon. I would also like to mention that on the military track, uh, we currently have some uh, 50 troops in the coalition training mission in northern Iraq. Our experiences have been very positive, and the cooperation in the mission area has been outstanding. Therefore, our government has taken a, decision, a new decision to stay in the operation at least until August 2017 and double the number of our forces up to 100 in the beginning of September this year. To conclude, I would like to thank all coalition members and especially the United States for your efforts carried out on behalf of the multinational coalition. Finland will stay committed and we are looking forward to meeting in this format also in the future. Thank you. I thank you uh, very much. Um, we, I now 
uh, give the floor to uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, Tobias Elwood, the Minister of State uh, from the United Kingdom, uh, has joined us, and we're glad to have you. Ambassador, thank you very much indeed. Can I just say I'm delighted to be here, and uh, given the changes that are taking place in the United Kingdom, I'm personally delighted to, to be here uh, to be able to continue Britain's work on the international stage, not least to do with this particular challenge that, that we face. Could I join others in uh, paying thanks to the governments of Canada, Germany, Japan, Netherlands, Kuwait, and of course the United States for co-hosting this important conference. As we know, Daesh is under significant pressure. The fight is tough and it takes time. But a series of successes have changed the dynamic. We pay tribute to the courage and bravery of the Iraqi forces who have won back Saladin and Anbar and the leadership of President Abadi and the government of Iraq. And as uh, uh, Minister Steinmeier reminded us of the ongoing challenges with the explosions that have taken place in Baghdad and elsewhere, the challenges continue. So now is the time to lay the foundations for a better future for the people of Iraq. It's absolutely critical that the resources that we commit today are used as part of a properly integrated plan as the campaign in Iraq reaches its final stages. But firstly, we need to address the challenges of civilian military cooperation. And as Bert Kunders from Holland implied, the challenge of civilian military cooperation is enormous. And we know from recent history that it is not automatic, nor is it simple. And the window of opportunity following fighting for the transition of peace can be small. So we need to ensure coordination between government actors, the UN, and humanitarian agencies. This group should work with the government of Iraq to explore how we can build on existing security structures so that they, they can do more to bring in key civilian actors. And secondly, we need to be robust and inclusive in the Iraqi-led political process. We are all too aware that politics of Iraq are difficult, but any delays in good governance actually plays into the, in, uh, the hands of the insurgents. So as we progress towards the liberation of Mosul and Nineveh, the political arrangements for what happens afterwards are critical. And thirdly, we need military plans that are sensitive to our wider objectives. This means that we must aim to reduce the likelihood of sectarian violence limit the humanitarian costs, and avoid reducing cities to rubble. And importantly, as part of the whole effort, we need robust, properly funded humanitarian and stabilization preparations to be in place. Without these plans and resources, we cannot expect military victories to be turned into enduring success and peace. So we welcome the initiative taken by our co-hosts to address the significant resources required in Iraq, as well as paying tribute to the work of Lisa Grand and the in-country UN team. Today, I'm pleased to announce that the UK will pledge a total of 60.5 million pounds in support of Iraq, building on our existing commitments and contributions. The humanitarian need requires substantial support and it is where we will, will direct the majority of our funding that we can announce today, pledging a further 50 million pounds to the humanitarian fund. Our stabilization contributions are focused on counter IED as explosive ha hazards that have already been mentioned in liberated areas pose a threat to the safe return of Iraqis to their homes and must be dealt with immediately to allow for further stabilization efforts to take place. So we are pleased to announce that we will be making an additional contribution of 5.5 million pounds to counter IED efforts, bringing our contribution to counter IED efforts in total to 7.75 million pounds. We are also pledging 3.25 million pounds additional funding for the UN's funding facility for immediate stabilization, on top of the 6 million we've already committed. This is providing essential support in towns and cities 
liberated already from Daesh. And we are also pledging an additional £1.75 million, providing essential support for civilian military cooperation and strategic communications. This is being channeled through the Global Coalition in support of the Government of Iraq's campaign for Mosul. And prior to our conference pledges made today, the UK has provided almost £80 million of humanitarian support in Iraq since 2014, getting life-saving aid to people who have been affected by the rise of Daesh. UK aid has provided medicine, emergency kits, psychological support, clean water, and improved sanitation, shelter, and cash assistance. And the UK is the largest donor to the Iraqi Humanitarian Pooled Fund. This is providing life-saving material and child health care, child protection services, and specialized support for escapees of Daesh terror. And more widely, UK support is helping to build stability in Iraq, supporting diplomatic and military efforts to defeat Daesh, and contributing to the UN Development Fund to support stabilization in Iraq. To conclude, Ambassador, combined with our new pledging funds, this takes the UK's total contributions in Iraq to 129.5 million pounds for humanitarian aid, 20 million uh, for stabilization. And this is in addition to the 300 million pounds of contributions to the G7's economic support package to Iraq. And when taken with our unique and sizable military contributions and our large diplomatic footprint, we believe this is a significant contribution to our partners in Iraq. The UK is committed to the fight against Daesh and to help the government of Iraq provide a better future so that our success endures. Thank you again to our hosts and the opportunity for all of us to underline our commitment to Iraq. Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate, especially in the light of uh, some of the transitions and so forth in the United Kingdom, the ability of the United Kingdom to step up in it such a substantial way. Um, let me turn the floor now, if I may, to Mr. Enrique Mora Bevanente, uh, Director General of Foreign Policy and Security for Spain. Uh, Madam Ambassador, I'm the Ambassador of Spain to the U.S. Unfortunately, Mr. Mora uh, will arrive this, this um, evening, will has not been able to be here. But, um, Madam Ambassador, I want to uh, convey to you and through you to the United States and, of course, to the rest of the co-hosts our um, appreciation for this initiative and, and the leadership shown for addressing this vital question of supporting the um, Iraq. Um, today's conference, I'm sure, will be a milestone in the international community's commitment and in our joint efforts to make possible a better future of the people of Iraq. Um, unfortunately, our transition is taking a bit more than that of the UK's. As you know, um, we've had recently um, two elections and we still don't have a government in place. So that complicates a bit the practical fulfillment of the commitments that we would have liked to um, present today. But I, I want to assure you that Spain um, has been, is and will continue to be committed with the future of Iraq economically, politically and militarily as we are doing. Um, as soon as we um, have the um, government in place and the institution, the institutions are working um, at its uh, uh, full uh, speed. Spain has the intention to implement a couple of actions that had in the pipeline. First, um, training of Iraqi police forces in order to uh, contribute to the stabilization and the return of the civilian population to cities and the territories freed from Daesh. In order to achieve that, Spain would send a new team of civil guards, Guardia Civils, who would be attached to the training center of the Spanish army already in Besmaya. Uh, in this context, the additional forces will also be employed in medical training. Secondly, Spain has been working in Jordan in the training of Iraqi personnel in the field of improvised explosive devices, a training that would be relocated in Iraqi territory during the following months. This would be the foundation for a future increase in the Spanish cooperation with our demining military school in the center of um, Ollo de Manzanares near Madrid in Spain. Finally, let me assure you the will of the current authorities in Spain to increase 
our humanitarian assist assistance. But again, as I said before currently, I hope you understand we, can we cannot make any concrete pledges uh, given the uh, political situation we're in. Uh, finally, Madam Ambassador, I want to um, thank you again for convening this meeting, which I'm sure will be um, to the benefit of the uh, government and authorities of Iraq and our common fight against terror. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, and thank you for being here uh, on behalf of your uh, Director General. Um, I'd now like to turn the floor to Dr. Mark Innes Brown uh, from Australia, the first Assistant Secretary for Middle East and Africa Division in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Thanks, Ambassador. Uh, I'd like to thank the United States and also the other hosts for um, organising this very important meeting. Others have already spoken powerfully, I think, about the scale of the humanitarian challenge in Iraq, and it's something certainly that the Australian government recognises and is, uh, is, will continue to be um, eager to assist. Today I'd like to uh, announce that Australia will provide another 15 million Australian dollars uh, in humanitarian assistance for Iraq. Uh, importantly, that includes $5 million for the United Nations Mine Action Service. I'd like to also underscore what others have said about the importance of the Mosul operation. Um, we need to ensure the Mosul operation leads to enduring stability in northern Iraq and not another round of uh, conflict between different Iraqi groups. Critically, there needs to be a comprehensive, medical, a comprehensive military, political, humanitarian and stabilisation plan for the Mosul operation. And there also needs to be an agreement amongst key Iraqi stakeholders prior to the operation on those elements. If we don't get the politics right, our recent security gains won't be enduring. Thank you. I thank you. And I now give the floor to uh, Mr. Patrick Lachaussee, Senior Counselor from the Embassy of France. Thank you, Madame. <coughs> La France. France. Less than a week ago experienced another new attack, yet another attack. After so many that we have suffered, I am thinking today of the many victims along the streets of Nice, but also the victims along the streets of Baghdad, the victims in Brussels and elsewhere. First and foremost, France wishes to thank all of the participants here today, and particularly wishes to thank the U.S. government. We thank uh, John Kerry and Samantha Power, Mr. McGurk, uh, for your commitment to finding and securing additional funding for stabilization and to help people to live normal lives in Iraq. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jean-Marc Ayrault, would have preferred to have been with us this morning. Unfortunately, uh, he was not able to do that. He is at, uh, he will be at the media meeting uh, of the coalition to counter ISIL. But I'd like to take this opportunity to convey a message on his behalf. We think today, are thinking today, of our friends in Iraq. And we would like to reassure you that the French people are by your side, continue to be by your side, to continue to support you as we always have supported you in all of your efforts to combat terrorism and to ensure peace. We uh, are planning three main initiatives with regards to our contributions. The President of the Republic, first and foremost, asked that we increase our support to, uh, of French troops to the Iraqi forces. France will redeploy its aircraft carrier, De Gaulle, in the fall. That will be to support the Shamal operation. Secondly, in terms of humanitarian efforts, since 2014, we have contributed 24 million euros for stabil stabilization efforts in newly liberated areas. Finally, to contribute to the UN FFIS, we, count, we plan to 
contribute 1 million additional euros this year. Thank you very much. Uh, Patrick, and uh, let me now turn the floor to Ms. Nina Kodelja, the head of the Department for Emerging Challenges and Threats from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Slovenia. Thank you. Uh, Slovenia welcomes today's pledging conference in support of Iraq, and we would especially like to commend the efforts of Iraq, who is at the forefront of our joint fight against Daesh. We are deeply concerned about the security situation and the living conditions of people in Iraq, and we sincerely hope that today's conference will contribute to the financial and fundamental improvement of the living condition of the people. This has to remain our priority on the political, security, and humanitarian agenda. Slovenia has been continuously providing humanitarian assistance to Iraq and to the neighboring countries in the region. Our efforts in the past have been devoted to supporting the work of international organizations, as well as implementing projects focused on empowering women and children refugees, implemented by a Slovenian humanitarian nonprofit organization, ITF Enhancing Human Security. The same humanitarian organization is also looking at demining projects with partner countries in Iraq. It is my pleasure to announce that the Slovenian government decided to pledge for today's conference the amount of 60,000 euros for, for 2016 and 2017. And with this amount, we would like to support the endeavors of UNHCR in Iraq. Thank you. Thank you. Again, uh, every contribution counts, so we're very appreciative. Um, we have only a few more speakers, and we will end with um, one of our most important speakers, and that is the Minister of Foreign Affairs from the Republic of Iraq. Um, but before that, let me turn now to His Excellency Carl Worker, the Counterterrorism Ambassador of New Zealand. Um, thank you, Ambassador. Um, uh, I express my uh, thanks to the United States and the co-chairs. Uh, we're New Zealand's very pleased to be present um, at this pledging conference uh, in support of Iraq. Um, we share the view that while the military campaign against Daesh um, remains absolutely vital, and we very much welcome the significant progress being made, but Iraq's longer-term security uh, will rest on building an economically sustainable, inclusive country and the efforts to establish good governance and tackle corruption. We also agree very much on the importance of ensuring that areas retaken from Daesh are rapidly stabilized so that internally displaced people can return. Uh, we remain concerned about civilians who, who recently fled Fallujah who encountered severe food water and shelter shortages. Um, I'm very pleased, therefore, to confirm that New Zealand will shortly make a $1 million contribution to help rebuild communities damaged in, by fighting uh, in Iraq. This latest funding takes our humanitarian assistance to those affected by conflict in Syria and Iraq to $17.8 million over the past five years. We'll provide uh, our new funding to the funding facility for immediate stabilization. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. And just so I can pace everybody, uh, we have uh, four speakers remaining, um, Italy, Korea, Turkey, and then the foreign minister from Iraq. Um, and then I believe I will be steering you to, uh, to the lunch. Um, but before then, His Excellency Pietro Sebastiani, uh, General Director for Development Cooperation, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Italy. To the other conveners as well, the humanitarian crisis in Iraq is one of the world's worst, with more than 10 million Iraqis in need of immediate humanitarian aid and 3.4 million internally displaced people many of them living in camps with limited access to medical care, water, and clothes. It also constitutes one of the most important threats for regional and global peace. Thanks to the efforts of the Iraqi forces and to the support of the international coalition, Daesh has already lost almost half of the Iraqi territory it used to hold in 2014. Yet, the military success represents just a first step for the return of IDPs to their homes, which can take place only when all stabilization measures in terms of services, infrastructures, and security are successfully implemented. 
In this regard, we are pleased with the significant progress made in Tikrit under the leadership of the UN, and to a lesser degree in Ramadi. Today's conference provides the international community with the opportunity to show its unity and steadfast support to the Iraqi people. Italy has been at the forefront both within the international anti-ISIL coalition and in the bilateral framework in the support for the Iraqi government and people, including by providing humanitarian aid since the summer of 2014. Let me briefly recall the activities the, it the Italian cooperation has implemented in Iraq in order to sustain the local population and the government of Baghdad to recover from the fight with Daesh and to confront terrorism, as well as supporting the Iraqi people in returning to their liberated areas and to give them the basic means to recover after years of conflicts, dictatorship, and international isolation. Since 2015, the Italian cooperation has intervened in Iraq with cooperation initiatives worth an overall amount of 197 million euros disbursed both in grants and in soft loans. Numerous significant projects have been implemented by Italy in order to recover and promote the Iraqi cultural heritage foster its agriculture, strengthen and develop its education and healthcare system, promote the private sector and restore many infrastructural sites. With regard to our stabilization, stabilization efforts within the framework of the global coalition, the overall Italian cooperation contribution to the UNDP FFIS funding facility for immediate stabilization so far reaches 7 million euros in grants of which 2.5 million euros contribution already disbursed and a second installment of 4.5 million euros contribution to NDP fund approved in May 2016. Italy is also currently considering the financing of two new multi-donor initiatives worth a total of 1 million euros to be executed in Iraq in the course of 2015 by UNDP in the Diyala province and with the IOM in the framework of the resilience and stabilization efforts promoted it in the country and coordinated by UNDP. The stabilization initiatives activated by the Italian cooperation have contributed to assist more than 750,000 Iraqi people in returning to their homes. Moreover, several initiatives with ample social impact have already been implemented by the Italian cooperation in the autonomous Kurdistan region especially in the agricultural field and the health sector. Further initiatives in such fields are currently under consideration. The needs of Iraq and of the local communities remain outstanding. The UN has identified an overall financing requirements to confront the crisis as it is currently evolving as close as to $1.4 billion only for this year. More resources are therefore necessary and additional efforts of the international donors community is urgently requested. Italy is ready to do its part in responding to these needs in terms of emergency, humanitarian, resilience and reconstruction aid. We are therefore willing to commit a new financial package to be dispersed in the course of the next three years. For the period 2016 through 2018, we will provide $33 million in grants in order to finance humanitarian resilience and demining activities, as well as to support the stabilization efforts coordinated by UNDP through the FFIS and possibly the FFES facilities. We stand also ready to offer the Iraqi government a significant soft loan package at a very concessional rate worth a total of 397 million US dollars. Such important soft loans resources will be utilized to finance initiatives to be agreed upon with the Iraqi government, such as significant reconstruction projects, restoration of basic social services, and indirect budget support initiatives. Infrastructural projects will be identified in coordination with international agencies, such as the Mosul Dam Rehabilitation Initiative, to be implemented in co-financing with World Bank, World $100 million Italian concessional loan granted to Iraq and executed by the Italian Trevi Company. Considering the grant resources of $33 million to be allocated to new projects and the mentioned significant soft loans package worth $397 million, the total pledge of Italy for Iraq for the years 2016-18 amounts at $430 million. 
Italian additional financial resources will be addressed to contribute in alleviating the suffering of the conflict-affected population in Iraq for the protection and assistance to IDPs, promoting reconciliation and stabilization in areas liberated from Daesh, and contributing as well to economic recovery and development. In this context, I also want to underline how important the Italian police training mission is for the stabilization of liberated areas in Iraq. The Carabinieri Task Force has been designed to contribute through the training of local and federal police to creating the conditions in terms of security and rural law for a safe return of IDPs and refugees to their home. So far, the Carabinieri Task Force in Baghdad has trained almost 4,000 units from local and federal police to be progressively deployed in liberated areas. We have seen how crucial is empowering Iraqi security forces to successfully hold territories. That is why we continue to encourage international partners to contribute under different forms to the Carabinieri Task Force trainers, advisors, staff officers, equipment, logistics, or financial support, with a view to matching the growing needs in different liberated areas while ensuring a common strategy, coordination of the efforts, and no duplications. Police training costs for less than military training, but it is as much as important to assure the end of Daesh terrorist threats in the country. We hope that amidst the different pledges today, it will be possible to single out resources for expanding the training output, bearing in mind that in order to double the current training output of around 5,500 trainees per year, it will be necessary to count on additional 60 trainers for an yearly cost of less than 10 million US dollars. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I now give the floor um, to the Ambassador for International Security Affairs of the Republic of Korea, His Excellency Shin Mung Ho. Thank you, Ambassador. On behalf of the Korean government, I appreciate the government of the United States and uh, cohorts for convening this important uh, conference today. It is a relief that the significant portion of Iraqi territory has been liberated from dreadful ISIL rule. This is an encouraging achievement, but at the same time we know that this achievement may be nullified someday if we cannot overcome challenges ahead of us by satisfying stabilization and humanitarian needs in Iraq. This is a time at which the international community must show greater solidarity and share the responsibility in addressing humanitarian situation in Iraq. As a young humanitarian donor, Korea has endeavored to do its utmost to contribute to global humanitarian efforts. In light of our experience from managing the Korean Provincial Reconstruction Team in Afghanistan in the early 2010s, we have learned the lesson that providing training for capacity building was one of the keys to post-conflict stabilization. In this regard, our pledging in support of Iraq today is very meaningful and timely. The Korean government has contributed more than 11 million U.S. dollars in humanitarian assistance for Iraq during the last two years. Today, I am pleased to announce that this year, Korea will provide additional $7 million to contribute to global efforts in supporting Iraq. Within this amount, $3 million will be allocated for the funding facility for immediate stabilization to support Iraq people who go back to their hometowns. I would like to reaffirm Korea's strong commitment to stay vigilant about the response to the Iraqi crisis. Korea will stand in solidarity with those who are here today by sharing the burden with the international community and continuing to join in international efforts to support Iraq. Thank you. Um, I thank you, uh, His Excellency Shin Meng Ho, and I now uh, give the floor to our penultimate speaker from Turkey, uh, the Deputy Undersecretary uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Umit Yalçin. Thank you. Excellencies, after long and intense efforts by Iraq and coalition, Daesh is clearly on the path to be defeated. 
the end of the Ash will be the beginning of another difficult process, a process of healing the wounds of Iraqis and re rebuilding a prosperous, stable, and safe Iraq. This task will be more difficult than defeating the Ash. If we fail to achieve enduring stability in Iraq, it will not take long for another terrorist organization like the Ash to re-emerge. We should do whatever it takes to prevent such a risk. Mosul operation will be critical. We cannot seek funds to deal with the humanitarian fallout of the Mosul campaign after it starts. We have to act now. There are two important issues we have to take into account. First, our support should be an initial step to help Iraq stand on its own feet. After a while, it is important for Iraq to build a self-sustaining economy. In this regard, we should also help Iraq to establish a functioning market economy to generate business and international trade. Second, transparency and accountability in allocating the donations are of critical importance. For many years, Turkey has been showing its solidarity with Iraq in concrete terms. We opened our doors to more than 200,000 Iraqis, including the Christians and Yazidis. We set up three camps in Iraq for almost 4,000 IDPs, 40,000 IDPs. We donated 1,000 containers for the housing needs of Iraqi IDPs, which cost 3 million euros. 500 of those containers will be delivered soon. And Turkish aid organizations have donated around 800 truckloads of humanitarian assistance since the very first day Daesh captured Mosul. In addition to those, Turkey pledges 750,000 US dollars for stabilization and humanitarian efforts in Iraq. This is just the beginning. In the coming period, we will continue to extend the necessary support to Iraq bilaterally as well as within international initiatives. Thank you. I thank the representative of Turkey uh, for his statement and his pledge. And I now uh, have the privilege of allowing for Mr. Al Jafari uh, to close out our session here on behalf of efforts to support your people and your country. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, most merciful, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, John Curry and uh, Foreign Secretaries uh, and Madam Secretary, may peace be upon thee. In the beginning, I would like to uh, uh, give to you, in the name of Iraq, uh, all the thanks for this uh, hospitality and uh, uh, organizing this important uh, conference, which expresses the solidarity of the uh, world community with Iraq and its war against Daesh, which is really uh, showing, representing a threat to all countries of the world. We thank uh, the ministers and the heads of uh, uh, delegations for your participation here and support of Iraq and uh, your uh, efforts to support Iraq uh, in, uh, in humanitarian uh, 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 efforts and uh, in the effort to fight others. Uh, your military assistant or logistical assistant uh, in supporting the uh, supported in the government of Iraq in uh, fighting and uh, uh, defeating uh, Daesh and liberating several c cities, uh, which uh, culminated lately in the liberation of uh, Fallujah, and uh, which uh, was done in collaboration between the Iraq forces and uh, uh, the popular uh, mobilization and the other uh, uh, tribal forces. Now all these combined are doing courageous efforts to liberate the cities and uh, townships uh, around Mosul and finally to eliminate uh, and uh, completely purify uh, 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 Iraq uh, from Daesh has become something imminent. Uh, Iraq goes through extraordinary unprecedented uh, uh, conditions because of the demands of war and the, uh, the use uh, reduction of state revenues because of the low uh, prices of oil and uh, the increase of uh, the internal IDPs in Iraq, which amount to about 4 million people. In order to uh, your support now, uh, financially and humanitarian, will participate in uh, alleviating the suffering of uh, our people from all the suffering. Uh, previously, your assistance had helped in uh, regenerating life in the liberated areas. Life had started coming back to uh, gradually to normal. Uh, now we have a completed uh, 
what uh, liberated Russia is, what we, uh, our forces had accomplished in uh, liberating Fallujah and Tayara is a great accomplishment. Daesh uh, now cannot uh, fight our heroes in the battlefield, uh, and now they are really pronouncing their last uh, breath. Uh, we'd like to draw the attention for uh, uh, the, 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 because of their uh, failure in the battle, they are increasing their uh, suicide missions, uh, like in Karada, where more than 300 Iraqis have been uh, assassinated in one of the most vicious uh, acts uh, faced by the uh, uh, civilians on the Daesh hands uh, lately. This uh, uh, expresses or shows the barbarism of Daesh, uh, which uh, really hide behind the religion. Uh, uh, the catastrophe of the displacement uh, faced in several governorates in Iraq are classified uh, as uh, the, one of the hardest displacements and migrations in the world. Uh, it had really affected all uh, the geographic uh, uh, areas of uh, Iraq. It was really uh, sudden and irregular and uh, forced on them that had separated uh, households from uh, each other. These are uh, the liberated areas are uh, uh, not yet fit for re, uh, uh, to, 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 uh, for living the local governments and international organizations have I have collaborated to limit the suffering of the people when they return to their homes. But the problem is much more than the uh, available means and possibilities. Uh, we should increase the efforts to uh, 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 safeguard the lives of the uh, returnees. Uh, we appreciate the understanding by the world of the conditions that uh, our government has uh, is facing in the economic and security areas uh, and the confusion that has uh, uh, emanated from them. Uh, uh, we think that uh, what is Iraq is facing in this, uh, uh, on behalf of the whole world, uh, we uh, will uh, uh, compel us to ask the world to as, uh, assist Iraq in order to uh, help in alleviating all the service uh, needs of for the returnees. Uh, we express our wishes and hopes for a very good successful program, for, and we thank all those who had supported and will support Iraq. Please accept our respect and appreciation for all your countries do, hoping and wishing you all the best and for your countries as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Minister, and, and thank you for being here and for uh, staying with us for the duration of this session. Um, first, uh, just an administrative note, we are uh, going to break for lunch, uh, but the lunch will actually occur in this room, and we are going to have 30 minutes of executive time before that so they can do up the room, so you will be uh, taken to a lounge uh, where you are welcome to spend that uh, 30 minutes or make calls or freshen up whatever uh, you would like to do, and we will be back here in 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to turn the floor over to Brett, our uh, peripatetic uh, envoy, in just a second. I, I just wanted to take note of um, what is a very heartening conceptual consensus uh, that exists uh, across the coalition and around the world. Um, First, that each of our nation's security fundamentally is shared security, it's collective security, and that we have to get Iraq right and pool our resources in an effective and intelligent and coordinated way in support of Iraqi efforts um, in order for us also to enhance the security of our own citizens. So the stakes are really, really high uh, for an event like this because the second conceptual consensus is, of course, that uh, a military victory uh, that does not take account of the political and economic dimensions of success or the roots of failure is not an enduring military victory. It can't be. It has never been. And we've seen it across the region. We've seen it in efforts that all of us have been directly involved in. So I think the conceptual consensus here, too, about the inextricable link between the military successes that, that so many of you have been a part of in support of uh, the Iraqi forces, uh, that that is one leg on the stool, and that the political leg and the economic, whether that's stabilization uh, money or humanitarian money, 
uh, that the welfare uh, and the dignity of the people of Iraq are going to be absolutely critical uh, for, for any of this to work in, in the long term. The last thing I will say before turning it over to Brett is just to applaud everybody here who dug deep and uh, knowing all that is pulling at you from so many different directions, uh, including domestic imperatives, uh, to find a way uh, to bring new money to the table uh, in advance of what are going to be new operations, and new operations, as we've heard, bring new displacement, new needs, but also, it really has to be said, new golden opportunities uh, to help uh, stabilize a country that has suffered too much uh, for too long. So with that, let me turn it over to, to Brett, and again, I applaud all the generosity gathered here in this room. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Power. I'll just be very brief uh, before we have some time and then go to lunch. At the lunch, we'll hear from the World Bank. Uh, we'll hear again from Lise with some more details on our funding facility for the expanded stabilization. We'll also hear from uh, USAID to talk about where these really extraordinary pledges, uh, how they will be uh, operationalized in practice. And also just to emphasize, you know, we're all in this together. When we first formed this coalition in the first meeting uh, almost two years ago in, in Jeddah, we've come an extraordinarily long way. I think this coalition is remarkably unified. And I want to thank uh, my coalition director, Pam Kwanru, who did a terrific job in pulling together uh, this very important event. Uh, we heard a lot about Mosul, and tomorrow uh, we'll have a fairly extraordinary uh, historic meeting of defense ministers who are meeting as we speak right now at Andrews Air Force Base together with foreign ministers and many of our intel chiefs uh, all together to talk about the next phases of this very difficult campaign. Uh, we'll lay out the Mosul operation in some detail, uh, what we have to do militarily, but also, most importantly, as we spoke here today, uh, the other elements of the plan that have to come together. That's the humanitarian plan, that's the stabilization plan, that's the governance plan, and also the agreement on the disposition of forces that will be used and making sure that uh, the rule of law is adhered to and working with our Iraqi partners. So we'll talk about that in some detail tomorrow. And I think what we did here today sets a, a good foundation for making sure that uh, the defeat of Daesh is not only uh, it can come as soon as possible, but also it's a lasting defeat. We have to make sure uh, that we never have to do this again. It has to be a lasting defeat of Daesh. Uh, we'll also finally, of course, talk about outside the core of Iraq and Syria, the foreign fighter networks, the propaganda networks, the financial networks, um, all of which uh, we have to combat daily, 24-7. It's a global challenge, which is why we have this extraordinary global coalition. So we can talk about some more details over the lunch, but again, I just want to thank you, and I look forward to seeing many of you over the rest of the course of today and, of course, tomorrow.